Yo-yo, how's everybody doing today? All right, so I guess you guys got the notification this time. We got a bunch of people online. How's everybody doing? Good evening, good evening. I guess Ardenew. <laughs> Andrew. Ah, okay. MacBook Pro versus iMac for developers. Which is more practical? MacBook Pro, so that you can move around with the laptop. You can go see clients if you're freelancing. You can take it in to see them and uh, give them little demos. That's it. Now they, nowadays, especially when it comes to coding, uh, uh, the hardware in a MacBook is so, so powerful. You're fine. Yo, yo, Andre. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, Mike Greer, caught me on short notice. See, I posted this thing like two hours ago, something like that. Mm. Uh, what do we got here? Hey, Stefan, we look somewhat alike, except for the fact that I have more elegant eyebrows. Well, that could be. Watching you feels like watching my father speaking. Do you happen to have a connection with Romania? <laughs> um, no, but... Um, uh, do come from a Ukrainian background, and according to my father's DNA, he's, he's mostly Slavic in terms of the background, Eastern European, so that could be why. Odin, Odin Wolf says, evening from Croatia. Hello, how you doing? How you doing? I hear it's a beautiful country, Croatia. Maybe blog with React and Firebase. Depends on, that's a conversation that I'm not involved with. Hey, Steph, what do you think of Cobalt? Didn't you ask me that yesterday? There's a lot of job opportunities in Cobalt. Try it out if you like it. Rocking a new hairstyle, I see. Yeah, getting shorter and shorter, shorter and shorter. I think uh, I might do a head shave at some point in the near future. We'll see how that, that goes. How many people are we now? 110 already. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the subject of the day. And then we'll do the Q&A. All right, guys. All right. So um, let me just jump into it. Okay, it's all about uh, the WordPress here. So somebody wrote to me, one of my um, mentees under my mentorship program, they wrote to me about um, using WordPress to set up a information-rich blog site for a client. So they wanted to know, number one, does it make sense to use WordPress? Is WordPress a good choice? Um, and then I expanded upon that because there's a little bit more to consider. So you can look at WordPress. You can look at uh, uh, drag and drop systems like a Wix or Squarespace. You can also look at, in the context of WordPress, do you wor use WordPress.com, WordPress.org? I'll explain the differences of that soon. And then you got all the different themes, which are the templates in WordPress. Should you build a theme from scratch? Should you leverage a commercial template and update it? What should you do? So there's a bunch of questions. We're going to get into it. Hit them one by one. So um, let's start with WordPress, and then we'll jump into the other platform. So with WordPress, you have three options. Number one, you could find a theme that is close to the design. So let me back up here. He presented to me uh, a bunch of sketches of what, of where, of how the site would look like, or what the site would look like, and the client basically approved the structure. You know, how many columns, where, uh, which, um, which subject categories were going to appear where, etc. The type of layout, etc. So he presented that to the client. The client approved it. So how to best implement that? Now, if we go back to um, so first, you got to find a theme. The first option, so you got three options, excuse me, you got three options. First thing you can do is you can find a theme, and WordPress has a huge uh, uh, ecosystem of themes. Themes are the WordPress templates. And um, so the first thing to do is look around, see if there's a theme out there, a commercial theme that is very close to what it is you need to do or you want to do for your client. The second option, is to uh, find a theme that is close and it can be modified uh, without going insane. Um, what do I mean by that? A lot of the themes out there in WordPress, they're not the easiest to work with because the code is not clean, but you can find 
good themes that have clean code that you can then modify. But of course, you have to understand how the theming uh, system works with WordPress. That's why I kept a theming you know, a theming tutorial in uh, the uh, my WebStack course because it's good to know. Um, there's many well-built themes out there. So you could find the theme that approximates what the client wants and then modify that theme uh, to uh, suit whatever the client's needs are. The third option is to build from scratch or use a real bare bones theme. That is the last option I would use within, when you look at these three. Why? Because reuse, 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 the top three rules of any type of development. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple of points about that I'd like to, to get into. So let me just read this and it will come to me. I would suggest implementation, implementation, oh, excuse me. I would suggest implementation compromise and get the site live as soon as possible. Many times our ideas about a site in terms of what we want will change once we go live. So your client may have an idea in their head of what they want to see, but when you actually show them something, when it's there, up there live, there's going to be some changes. This is like happens 90% of the time. Uh, I continue. Uh, oh, no, that's just nuts. Okay, so he, he continues. This is a question that he had. I said, I have a question about WordPress, but I can't seem to get a solid answer from Google search. I have a WordPress account that I use to build my own site. I pay for the business plan, but because you can't install plugins with the free personal plan option. So when you build the site for someone else, do you have to set them up with a completely separate WordPress account or do you need to, that they will need to pay the business plan? Being that it is the only option in order to have plugins on your site. Okay, so based on this question, I'm assuming this guy is using WordPress.com which is basically WordPress hosting. It's kind of their version of Wix, if you will. You can install WordPress on your own server. It's called the self-hosting option, where you install WordPress, and a lot of the hosting companies out there will have WordPress ready to go. You just click it and installs. And, and you can install plugins, and you can install um, uh, all the th any theme that you want, any frameworks that you want. These are all tools uh, that you can implement in WordPress. Now, the thing is, yeah, to answer your question, if you're going to set up a separate site for your client on WordPress.com, yes, you will have to set up her own account, and she'll have to pay for her hosting with WordPress.com. On the other hand, if you set up a uh, WordPress site on some other hosting solution, then... Uh, uh, yeah, if you set up, sorry, I got distracted by a instant message there. Anyway, if you set up a WordPress site on off of WordPress.com on any hosting solution, you're still going to have to pay for the hosting, although you won't have to pay for WordPress. WordPress is free. So in essence, when you're using WordPress.com, you're basically paying for their hosting and their service and support. I don't use WordPress.com. I never have. I just self-host my WordPress. Um so there you go. So either way, the client is going to have to pay. Now let's go back to the options here. Again, if you can find a theme that's very close to what you need, um, maybe it might make sense to launch just with that theme with slight modifications in terms of the branding and so forth, as opposed to rebuilding from scratch. Unless your client has a very clear idea of what they're looking for in terms of the structure of their information site. Now, how about using a builder like a Wix or a, a Squarespace, that depends on the needs of the site in general. Now, uh, you have to see whether the tool set that comes with a Wix site, if it's more compatible with the needs of your client's business or not. Sometimes it will be, oftentimes it won't. When you use WordPress is when you want more flexibility, you, have, you want to provide a site that your customer can go in there and add new articles as they will, edit articles, etc. create multiple authors who have different levels of permission. I don't know if you can do that with Wix or Squarespace. So for example, uh, on the killer size blog, I'll have editors and I'll have, uh, in the past I've had authors, where I can give different permissions for different users. So I can have an author who can edit their own content, add their own content, but they can't publish and they can't edit uh, content uh, that doesn't belong to them on the site. I don't think you can do that with Wix if you have 
multiple authors on the same site. That's just one example of the extra capability that you have with WordPress versus a typical site builder. There's pros and cons to everything, and it's always uh, situational based on the needs of the particular project. So, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers um, WordPress. You have any questions related to WordPress and uh, freelancing or WordPress for just putting up your site? It's a good solution. We use WordPress on uh, the Studio Web blog. We use it on the uh, Killer Sites blog. Uh, I've rolled out my own um, blogging engine in the past, but we decided just to go with WordPress because we didn't want to have to keep uh, things up to date uh, in terms of uh, you know security issues and plugins and so on. So there you go. So Pavi has Wix. Wix is a site builder. It's just a solution. For me, in my opinion, site builders like Wix or Squarespace and there are others, or uh, blogging engines uh, or CMSs, content management systems like WordPress, uh, Drupal, Joomla, they're all just options that you can leverage in your web work. You shouldn't see them as competition. Uh, you should see them uh, as just tools that you can leverage. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. All right, Gator Green from Estonia. All right. Uh, let's see what let's see what we got here. If you're going to use their technology, it makes sense to host with them. It can. It can. Um, I think the majority of WordPress sites are not hosted with them, but for sure. All right. Uh, let's see. I found the truth about you, Stefan. You have, you has been hiding your real age. You're actually 456 years plus one day. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. Uh, okay, what else do we got here? Uh, hello from the Philippines. Currently 2 a.m. IT. No sleep. <laughs> All right, Jensen. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember back in the day, I used to stay up all night coding. Hey, Stefan, with the industry getting bigger and more people getting into it, do you think that the nerdy programmer stereotypes will disappear? I think it, it, it's, it's kind of faded quite a bit. Let me tell you, back in the 90s, it was super nerdy to be into code, and I think that's really faded quite a bit, to be honest with you. Mohammed, is it a realistic goal to aim to be both software developer and cybersecurity expert. Well, it just take you longer to get there, I suppose, but uh, I sp you could do it. It would just take you longer. Mm. Artur asks, hi, Stefan, how are you? I'm fantastic, I hope you're good too. Uh, what would you suggest to do for aspiring web developer in these difficult times? Looking for projects seem to be a challenge as a lot of places are shut down. I would reach out to local businesses, small businesses, um, local little restaurant, coffee shops. They may not have money. That's fine. You do. You want to build your portfolio. Reach out to them. Hey, listen, I want to help you out. And you start there. There's a good opportunity for you to reach out to the local business community, help them out, and, uh, and develop some reputation and some skill sets. Very important. Uh, let's see. How do you go about editing WordPress themes JavaScript. Well, you have to, uh, there are theme files. You go into the themes folder in WordPress. Um, all the folders are there. All the files are there. And you just edit the JavaScript like you would edit JavaScript in any web page. That's it. A theme, a theme, uh, a set of themes, excuse me, theme files in WordPress are just PHP pages, right? Uh, oh, yes. We were proper nerds in the 90s. Exactly. It's kind of relaxed up. Do you have SaaS business tra trainings? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do I have SaaS business training? Uh, in terms of how to start up a SaaS business, yes. Uh, if you take my entrepreneur course, that will help you there um, in, a big, in a big way. And of course, there's my mentorship where I'll work with you to help you build your business. Any tips on negotiation sale techniques? Oof. Many books have been written about that. I think the number one tip is I got from one of my, uh, I'll give you two tips, one of my mentee, my mentors rather. He said, um, when you walk into a deal, always be prepared to walk away. Don't be uh, wanting it too much. Mm -hmm. 
So you go in with the expectation, I'm going to, I'm li- I'm going to leave psychologically, number one. Number two, if you don't know what the value is of a product or something you're buying or service that you're selling, let them set the price uh, and then double whatever they offer you. Uh, so if you don't know what it's worth, you know, and he says, uh, he says, uh, I'll give you 10,000. You should say, okay, I'll, I want 20,000. And then you, you usually find a middle spot. If you do know what it is you want to sell, you know it's value if you're selling, um, then you double the price that you want. So if you want 10, you say, I want 20. If you know that it's worth 10. And you know, on the other hand, if you are buying and you know what it's worth, offer half of what it's worth. There are, those are my tips. It's all psychological, by the way. It all depends on how... Uh, it all depends how you uh, position it. All right, Daniela says, Hi, Stefan, you're do it, just doing your CSS course. I finally understood position. You explain it so well, thanks. I'm glad you understand it. That's, uh, that's my strength is teaching the basics that other people don't teach. Thanks, thanks for letting me know. Didn't get the notification yet, but it looks like you, you started early. No, I started on time, maybe a minute late. That's about it. Uh, we'll see what we got. Hold on. Isn't there a stigma about WordPress? What's that about? Listen, there's a stigma about every language and every technology at a given point in time. You know what I mean? Um, yes, there's a stigma because WordPress had some. It's a messy code base. It used to be hacked every two seconds. Um, it had some uh, growing up period to contend with, right? So, Hmm. Technologies that come after older technologies have the benefit of having learned what the older technologies learned through trial and error. So newer technologies are able to avoid those initial errors older technologies had experienced in the past. Same thing with PHP. A lot of people still judge PHP based on what it did 10 years ago. Um, And there is some legacy PHP out there that stinks. But modern PHP is right up there with any of the other modern languages, and it has certain advantages in given, in given the context. Let's see what we got here. Technology as help in work or as substitution for work? Um, good question. It depends on the tech. Like, for example, AI and machine learning, I think, uh, although it's got a bright future, it's been overhyped as of recently. Why? Because the industry wants to get funding. Um, AI will not replace too much these days yet, but they will support uh, and uh, technology help, if you will. Um, you see that in many many situations, like like the the web builders. People worry about the web builders replacing web design. No, they they are assisting tools. They are not replacing tools, right? Uh, Stephen, what's your view on parallax effect? Do you think it's overused or not? And I'm not. A, it looks really cool. But it gets in the way of usability in a big way. So if I were to use Parallax, and we've used it in the past, I would be very, do it in a minimal way, because it, it just it just gets in the way. It's like, it's confusing. You get that wow factor, and then it's confusing. So if you could turn it on and then shut it off quickly, or just use it very uh, conservatively, that would be my thing. But it, it has a lot of uh, wow factor, right? But it gets in the way. You mentioned 1420 New York time, but it looks like you started 415. Really? Oh, maybe on Twitter. Maybe I made a mistake on Twitter. What are you going to do? CSS can be a pain in the butt. You got this. Good luck there. It can be. See, you got to understand the box model. That's the big confusion and the cascade. If you understand the box model and the cascade, and that's the hierarchy, and then you're all set to go with uh, CSS. What is the best rapidly way to learn WordPress and become expert? Well, first you got to learn HTML and CSS, be comfortable with that. Then I would do beginner's PHP or foundational PHP training because PHP is used to create WordPress. And then I would just jump into WordPress. If you did those three things, you become a WordPress expert pretty darn quick. PDQ, as they say, pretty darn quick. Uh, for myself, learning C++ as my first language has helped me understand 
JavaScript faster, but this seems to be a taboo, unorthodox way of learning. Thoughts on this? Yeah, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that C++ um, is harder to learn, you could argue, because you've got to, it's strongly typed. You've got to deal with all kinds of things that you don't have to deal with with JavaScript. Generally speaking, if you're learning programming for the first time, I would lean towards an easier language like a JavaScript, like a Python, uh, ver versus um, a C++. But if it worked for you, it worked for you. As I said, as I have said many times, if you know one programming language, for you to learn the second, the third, and the fourth becomes super, super easy. Python or Golang, most of the time I would go with Python just because it's it's a much more popular language, has a lot more use cases. So I'm done with this social distance crap come May. Yeah, social distance, it's, uh, it's difficult, it's difficult, but I think it might be with us for a while. That being said, I think they're gonna have to flip the script here. Instead of locking everybody down, uh, I think uh, a lot of people, the people who are, who are at risk should stay locked down. They're gonna have to open up the economy because as the economy continues to falter, there could be some large, large problems that even are far outweigh the virus. And for example, big food producer in the U.S., Tyson, I think they're the biggest, they're saying that the food, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The food track, the food supply lines are starting to be disrupted, which would be really bad, really bad. So I say you know, sick people, uh, older people, uh, overweight people have to stay hidden, and we have to we probably have to get the economy going. There's a you got to weigh this, but I'm not an expert. But you know, when the food supply lines, there we go, are starting to break down, then you know the least of our problems is going to be Corona. Sending love and peace from real Muslims. Why? Well, thank you, Asim Abu Salam. Uh, thank you, much appreciated. Hi, Stefan. Have you heard of front end masters? If you have, what do you think about their courses? No, I haven't heard about them. I haven't heard about them. So uh, I probably would think Studio Web courses are better, but I'm very biased. <laughs> JavaScript, easy, go with Python. Python is actually easier, I would say, than JavaScript in a way because JavaScript's got some weird, um, weird things. It's a weird language. It's an inconsistent language, whereas Python, I find, is a bit more consistent. Uh, I'm not dissing JavaScript. I like JavaScript, but I'm just telling you it's the way it is. Social distancing is not difficult when you see your neighbor leave their house in a body bag. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I also, I always social distance. Way before coronavirus, I always, I'm not a handshaker. I like to wear, I wear gloves. I would fist pump, fist bump or elbow. Uh, if I was not feeling well, I would not go out uh, for like a decade and a half now. Um, if somebody, if I had friends who have young kids and I, coming back from school in the winter, I'd not visit them because kids bring the germs. I've always been like that, you know. So just wearing gloves a lot and keeping your, using social distance, you're going to get sick a lot less. Forget about coronavirus, every type of virus and flus and stuff. When I started to uh, wear gloves about 10 years ago or so, I, I stopped getting sick at the change of the seasons. Like, uh, what's what we got here? Uh, hi, Stefan. I humbly admire you and your videos. I'm glad I could help. Thanks for letting me know. Do you have an opinion on cyber panel for virtual private servers? Never used them, so I couldn't say. Check out the reviews. What I always do is call up their tech support line. See if their tech support actually answers. That's huge, right? Before you buy. All language are equally hard for beginners, guys. It's a way of thinking that's hard. Yeah, that's, there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that, although I would argue learning C++ is harder than learning Python because Python, you don't have to worry about uh, data types and so on and a bunch of other things. But yeah, there's, yeah it's, it's the, it, you're, you're re, when you're learning to program, you're literally changing the way you think. Hi, Steph. I know you used to host your own servers back in the day. Any tips for someone wanting to become a DevOps system in? Well, DevOps has changed quite a bit since I was doing that. Um, 
Yeah, just, you know, you just got to do it. You know, you can uh, install Linux. You know, a lot of a lot of DevOps and system and stuff is on Linux or Unix-based systems. So just st- install Linux on, on some old laptop or boot it off a, a USB key or something and just start learning how to na- navigate around Linux and you could just take it from there. Uh, let's see. What do you say to a customer that says I can hire someone online to build me a website for much cheaper? Say, say, go at it, have fun with that, and then they might come to you in six months when their site is sucks. Uh, building your own portfolio site seems to be the hardest one. So many ideas. It just that me or is normal. It's normal. The hardest part about doing anything when you're starting out is making a decision, deciding to go left or right on things. You know. So just. I, again, I always say, just take a, a basic theme, you know. If you're code-centric, have a, a nice, simple, clean theme that, uh, that it's a clean, simple, minimal design. And then you go after clients emphasizing you're providing structure and code uh, and functionality. If you're design-centric, make sure, you know, adjust your portfolio site accordingly. If you're saying, I'm a great UX UI designer, well, make sure your site has a great UX in UI. Stuff I would create a simple SQLite la- database. How do I connect it with backend now? Well, the database is part of the backend. So how do you connect it? Well, it depends what stack you're using, whether you're using Django or PHP or Java, you know. Um, Python is definitely easier. I feel JS has some circular reference sometimes, which is hard to get my head wrapped around. Yeah, the biggest problem with JS is that it's inconsistent. Uh, certain operators will operate in certain, will have a certain impact in one context and will have a different impact in another context when in JavaScript. That's one of the big ones. And JavaScript, though, has object oriented like um, functionality and constructs. It's actually a, um, it's not, in a technical pure sense, it's not a pure object oriented language. It is, um, at least uh, before ES6, it is. Um, Ah, geez, prototypical base language. So it, it's just kind of a weird thing. But anyway, it still works. And like anything else, you just write code, you get better. Mm. Okay, I'm scrolling down here. I'm going through. Uh, do your neighbors complain when you play drums? What do you jam out the most? Uh, yeah, I've had some complaints. Um, I typically play during the day. I'm in a corner unit, uh, one of the big ones in the place, and there's I don't have neighbors uh, this way, and uh, it's cement all around, so it's pretty good isolation. And I have another room this side. I got another room this side besides this room, so I have buffers. But yeah, I've had some complaints. Um, but that's why I play with the, these brushes here. They're not nearly as loud. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I play during the day. I'm not playing at you know one in the morning. Uh, depends on the neighbor too. Mm. Should I learn Node or React first? Uh, do you know your basics? Do you know your HTML, and your CSS, and your JavaScript? If you do. Then you should look around at job opportunities, and based on what you find, then you learn whatever technology makes sense in that situation. Mm. Or, uh, or at least people have gone through the beginner stuff. How to not be vulnerable in production is my goal. Yeah, just you gotta just you gotta build apps, man. You gotta build apps. You know, you gotta start uh, writing code for real. It's such an important thing. I know it's a leap a lot of people want to take. That's why I say do what free projects, little projects where it's not crucial. You know, it's not like you if you mess up, it's gonna be a terrible thing. You know, you're gonna mess up. That's why there's version 10 of iOS and version 10 of Windows because uh, lots of bug fixes. Lots of functionality fixes and additions. You know, software is an imperfect process. As a company that builds custom web applications, what do you say to a... Co- okay, we read that one. Keep. Uh, okay. Do you use Vim? No, no. I've used it like you know, 25,000 years ago, but I haven't used it since. I prefer uh, 
more feature-rich uh, code editors, but that's largely a personal thing. I know a lot of people love Vim. Well, I've knew a lot of people anyway and love Vim. In my area, San Diego, everybody's talking about WordPress. I'm a developer using Node and WebStack with jQuery, JS jQuery. Should I learn WordPress? Only learn what you need to learn based on the job or project requirements. I call it the need to nerd basis. Learn on a need to nerd basis. You know, don't pre-learn unless you just have a personal interest. What is the best way to practice various JS functions? I'm asking because for what I'm doing right now, I don't have a need for super fancy JS. The simpler your code, the better your code is. Let me say it again. The simpler your code, the better your code is. Noobs and intermediate people strive to write complex code. Experts strive to write simple, easy code. So that's good. Just, you know, just, just keep writing. Just keep writing. And when you see uh, a, a need comes up, in fact, when you have a very complex function or a class, whether you're writing JavaScript or C Sharp or Python or whatever, if you find yourself with a very complex function or a class, that means that function or class uh, needs to be repaired, it needs to be repaired. It's no good when it's too complex. Does DigitalOcean have a customer support line? We all know Google results for customer support lines get faked. You know, I've never, I we've been working with DigitalOcean for years now, and I don't believe they have, at least I haven't checked in a while. They don't have a phone line. They do have customer support where they do answer, but it isn't very quick. You have to know what you're doing with DigitalOcean. You have to know what you're doing. Tech support is not uh, the best. I use another VPS, a uh, local one here in Montreal, that uh, has the advantage, many of the advantages of a DigitalOcean with advanced VPS functionality, but it's full service. And so they take care of everything for you. But you don't have as much uh, control. There are certain limitations and certain things that you have to do if you want, you have to talk to them if you want to get done. But I don't care because it's just, I don't want to be dealing with DevOps, excuse me, with uh, server management when I have a SaaS that I'm running. I want to deal with my own SaaS. I want to deal with my own code base. I don't have to worry about server configurations and updates and patches and so on, and backups. They take care of it. That's just me. One of my favorite features for Python is type hinting. Yes, we have we have found it really helpful as a team. It tells us what types we should pass to our functions or methods and what they will return. So there you go, fantastic. Exactly. Um, learn a framework when you need it, exactly. Mm. How many videos before you play the drums? <laughs> I play. I showed a video of me playing the drum the last, I think the last live stream or the one before that. At the end of the stream, I played drums uh, for a little while. It was pre-recording, but it's still me playing drums here. Mm. Uh, so you're cemented yourself with the drums. I'm not sure if I follow that. Maybe it will come to me later. Sometimes I get questions. I'm not sure what people are asking, and then the next day, oh, that's what they were. That's what they meant. So my apologies if I don't get it the first time around. Not the biggest fan of MS Microsoft, but C Sharp with AI assisted development is fire. You can't underestimate Microsoft when it comes to development tools. They've always been really, really good. Uh, man, yeah. Hmm. At Alan Johnson, here we go. Front end with a little knowledge of back end to be more employable. Yeah, for sure. Always good to know a little back end. Mm. What else do we got here? I've I've had complaints. I've heard complaints. Cops called on me during the day and death threats since the ripe age of four because of practicing music. <laughs> oh, there you go. What, what kind of, what do you, what do you play? What do you, what do you do? You're a singer, you're a drummer, a guitarist, all these things. Uh, Tailwood CSS, don't know it. Alan John Johnston has got it right. 
For everyone asking what framework to use, it comes down to what you're trying to do. He can't give you anything without that info exactly. It's all very much project specific. There's no ultimate framework. There is no ultimate language. It all depends on what you want to do. Mm. Let's see what this guy, Body Hamad, says, has to say here. When I take a quick look at the source code of one of Python packages, it looks absolutely confusing. Like, I don't even know Python. It is that complicated. Or is that me? Listen, one of the worst things you can do is go, trying to decipher other people's code. Um, that's why experienced developers always say, write simple, simple code. So you don't have this situation going on here. Simplicity, those who can des deliver something in simplicity, in simplicity, are the masters, whether it be coding or martial arts or whatnot. Hi, Seven. I just found your channel. Very straightforward. Congratulations. Are you familiar with Harvard CS50? Would you recommend it? I have not looked at Harvard CS50. I don't know. What do you think about calling a Python script from PHP for server backend stuff? By calling a Python script from, with PHP for a server. I, we've done stuff like that. Having one language leverage or call another language, very common. So yeah, if it works for you, yeah. If let's say on your server, you have some Python script that is uh, does the job really well, and you just want to get the result of it or process it, then yeah, then you could definitely do that. Uh, I'm sh I, I, I haven't looked at it, but I'm sure you could call Python with PHP in some way anyway. Web development, a good career and future? Yes, for sure. Considering how easy it is getting to build one nowadays. Yeah, what you can do now versus what you, you know, what you could do with this much effort now used to take this much effort 10 years ago. That's true. But the ball just keeps shifting. Uh, so sites are just much more advanced than they used to be. But there's always going to be work. It's just the work that you're going to do is different. That's all. Hmm. In the old days, we used to spend all kinds of time in Photoshop uh, creating uh, buttons and rollover effects or writing complex JavaScript to do rollover effects in the web pages and the web apps. Now it's all done with... Uh, HTML5 and CSS3, you know, but that's good. Trust me, that's good. Let's see what we got here. I find reading documentation can be hard to understand with all the use of technical terms. Does it become easier or should I look at other resources? You know, it becomes easier. It, chances are likely is that you're, you have some holes, some gaps in your knowledge of some of the basic principles and concepts. In my experience, whenever I run into complexity like that, I can't understand docs. It's because there's some basic concepts I just don't understand. It's where a good course comes in. Mm. Let's see, Eddie Stefan, have a video. What makes a great co what makes a great coder? I recommend. Yes, yeah, so I guess I have like what are fifteen hundred videos on my YouTube channel. So that sounds like a video I might make. Are soft skills overrated? No, they're underrated. If you can't communicate with people, you know, you're, it's not good. You got to be able to communicate well. Practice that if you're, so, if you're not solid with that. Trust me, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Any advice on learning the WordPress ecosystem? Put up a WordPress site, start working with WordPress, start reading around, checking up, you know, best... Uh, WordPress themes, best WordPress frameworks, best WordPress plugins, you know? Shayan, what's your advice for finding a web dev job in Montreal? What's the average salary for junior web dev in Montreal? I don't know what the average salary is now. It depends on, um, depends on where you're working, right? And uh, what's your advice for finding a job? The same advice, finding a job everywhere. Good portfolio site. Uh, you know, try to work with some local businesses so you can show that you work with people. Same old same. What are we doing 
for time here. Laravel over Yi2. Most of the time I'd say Laravel. 40 minutes. Well, time flies when you're having fun, eh? Uh, which is best for desktop application, Java or Python? That's a good question. That's a good question. Java's never been super successful for desktop applications using uh, Java Swing. Uh, Python, I don't know. You would have to look into that. I don't know. Uh, apart from ice hockey, what's the big sport in Canada? Hmm. I don't think there's, I think UFC was very big here. UFC was very big here. Uh, very popular here. Still is. Um, soccer, that's pretty popular out here. Uh, DD, piano and singing. Oh, there you go. It's better than the drums, let me tell you. Uh, drums disturbs people a little bit more than piano and singing, I, I would guess. Hi, Steph. I am learning website development from scratch. Should I be afraid of the ones who are working with CMS? No, not at all. Not at all. CMSs are just tools that you can use as a professional, web professional. Is mayonnaise an instrument that will get you death threats? <laughs> All right, guys, it's 41 minutes. My mouth is going dry, and uh, I got a bunch of stuff I got to take care of. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this um, live stream. And I will try to get to more of your questions on another day. 195 users, 58 thumbs up. Give me some thumbs up as I sign off here. I appreciate that. And um, there you go. We'll talk soon. Ciao, ciao.